Hello, everyone. I'm Zhong Tianhe. I'm talking about our paper, Improved Online Correlated Selection. This is a joint work with Rui Quangao, Zhi Yi Huang, Zi Pei Nie, Bi Junyuan, and Yan Zhong. Let's see the online bipartite matching problem. We are given a bipartite graph G, which contains a set of offline vertices L, a set of online vertices R, and a set of edges E. There are three kinds of settings for this problem. First, the unweighted case, all the weight of the edge are unique. And second is vertex weighted, that all the offline vertices are a certain weight, while the weight of the edge is defined to be the weight of the offline vertex that it links to. And the third one is the edge weighted case that all the weight of the edge can be arbitrary. So the vertex weighted case is a generalization of the unweighted case, while the edge weighted is a further generalization of the vertex weighted. And for all of them, the offline vertices and the vertex weights are known initially, while the online vertices arrive one at a time with their edge, and the algorithm should make a decision irrevocably that uh, which offline vertex uh, the online vertex match to, and, or the algorithm leaves the online vertex unmatched, and the decision is made when uh, immediately when the online vertex arrive. So. Objective of the algorithm is to maximize the total weight of matched edges. And the competitive ratio is defined to be the expected objective over the optimal of the matching in hindsight, which is minimized over all the possibility of graph and arrival order. So why we need randomized algorithm, and why we need the assumption of that the adversary is not adaptive. So it's because otherwise, even in unweighted case, the algorithm can only be trivially 0.5 competitive. And in actuated case, we need a little bit more assumption that an offline vertex can drop its ascent edge for free to be matched with a new happier edge. And it's called free disposal model. So why we need this assumption? It's because in actuated case, no randomized algorithm can be omega-1 competitive without free disposal. And it's also motivated by as allocation that the advertiser don't mind being assigned more higher quality impressions than they paid. So that's all for the definition of the problem. And we see some previous results. Because the unweighted and vertex weighted case there is a ranking algorithm that achieve optimal one minus one over E competitive ratio. And for the actuated case, there is a seminal paper called uh, achieve 0.5086 competitive. And they introduce a new technique called online correlated selection of OCS for brevity. And we improve the OCS algorithm and achieve a better competitive ratio in our paper. So let's first see the definition of online correlated selection. So we are given a ground set of element E. The online selection instance is a sequence of pairs of elements. The pair of elements in round T is denoted by the set ET. And the online selection algorithms select one per pair online. So the definition of gamma semi OCS is the following. An algorithm is called gamma semi OCS if for any online selection instance and any element E that appears in K round, element E is unselected with probability at most two to the minus K times one minus gamma to the K minus one. And gamma is a parameter that, uh, that describes the negative correlation that the algorithm introduced in the selection process. And we want to optimize gamma to be as large as possible. A trivial algorithm can achieve uh, gamma x to zero by independently uh, random in each round. So let's see our results. We have a, a we give a 
optimal semi-OCS algorithm. And we propose a new problem called multi-way semi-OCS, and it can serve as a subroutine for the vertex weighted on pattern matching. So the definition of multi-way semi-OCS will be introduced later in our talk. And there is also a problem called gamma OCS, which is defined similar with semi-OCS, but the, we can uh, only consider a subset of runs containing the element E, and we consider the probability that E is not selected in, the, in this subset of runs. And it is served as a subroutine for the attributed online buffer matching. We also improved gamma OCS uh, from the previous paper. And, but in this talk, we will introduce semi-OCS and multi-way semi-OCS. So for the uh, OCS, gamma OCS, there is another talk in the same session that's uh, dealing with OCS. So uh, they will uh, talk more about OCS and we will only focus on semi-OCS in our talk. And you see that for the vertex weighted online pattern matching, uh, we although we, we doesn't achieve a optimal one minus one over E competitive ratio uh, using the multi-way semi-OCS subroutine, uh, it, it gives a fundamentally different approach than the ranking algorithm. And uh, our algorithm gave some insights on the uh, matching problem. So, now let's see the first is the optimal semi OCS algorithm. So we first introduce a meta algorithm called it is a two way sampling without replacement. And the parameter for each one is a weight vector. And know that for the two way case, it only contains two elements. And in the round T, if both the elements have been selected, it's selected arbitrarily. Otherwise, select each unselected element with probability proportional to WET. So first we prove an important lemma for this algorithm, which is negative correlation. Uh, let UT denote the set of elements that are unselected in the first T rounds. And for the algorithm with any weights, any round T, and any discrete subset of elements A and B, the probability that all the elements in A and B are unselected in the first T rounds is smaller or equal to the probability that all the elements in A are unselected times the probability that all the elements in B are unselected. So this will be useful when we prove our optimal semi-OCS. And an important remark is that the lemma no longer holds if we have three or more elements in each round. So this is a fundamental difference for the analysis of two-way OCS and uh, multi-way semi-OCS. So we'll see it later. So now we give our optimal semi-OCS based on the meta algorithm. So we maintain the state variable that's the number of previous rounds that contain element E, you know, it as KE and whether each element E has been selected before. Round T, suppose the round contains E and E prime. If both of them have been selected, it's that arbitrary. And if one of them has been selected, select the one that has not been selected before. And if neither of them has been selected, so we compare the number of rounds that they appear before. If they are not equal, we select the one with more previous appearances. Otherwise, we select uniformly at run. So for this algorithm, we can prove the following theorem by induction. For the in any instance of any elements that appears in K rounds, the probability that element is never selected by the algorithm is at the most the following, two to the minus two to the K plus one. And by simple, by simple calculation, it leads to a, a one half semi OCS. And by given that this is also a lower bound for the problem, we can guarantee that the algorithm is 
optimal stimulus test. And next, we move on to the multi-way semiosis. Multi-way semiosis problem is a generalization of two-way semiosis in a view that uh, it is a arbitrary marginal distribution uh, on the elements in each round. So this is a formal definition here. In each round T is associated with a non-negative vector X at mass such that the summation of the mass equals to one. And the vectors are unknown at the beginning and are revealed as a corresponding round. So in any round T, we let Y E T to be the cumulative mass of element E in the first T rounds, and let Y E be the total mass in instance for brevity. So we define an algorithm to be P multi-way semi-OCS for a non-increasing function P if for any multi-way online selection instance and any element E, E is unselected with probability at most P Y E. So you see that we want to optimize the algorithm so that P decreases as fast as possible. And uh, note that a trivial algorithm can achieve py equals to uh, e to the minus y by random uh, proportional to the mass in each round and select the elements according to the uh, run, uh, according to this randomization. So now let's see our multi-way semi-OCS algorithm. We design a weight function W to be the following. Wy equals to exp y plus y squared over two plus c times y cubed. And we maintain the cumulative mass of each element and for each element, whether it has been selected before. In round T, if all the elements have been selected, it's selected arbitrarily. Otherwise, we select an unselected element E with probability proportional to xet times wyet minus one. So here, x is the mass of this element in this round, while the w is a weight that based on the cumulative mass. So when you first see this, you may, it may be a little bit counterintuitive that uh, we give a larger weight for the uh, elements that has a, a higher cumulative mass that are unselected. And so we will see later that why we do this. So we first see the theorem. So this algorithm is a P-multi-way semi-OCS for PY equals to the inverse of the weight, which is equals to the EXP minus Y minus Y squared over two minus C times YQ. As an application, it runs a balanced algorithm in unweighted and vertex weighted online binary matching and is 0.593 competitive. So you can see that uh, I have mentioned before, uh, a trivial algorithm can ach achieve uh, e to the minus y for the uh, p multi way semi OCS. So you can see our algorithm uh, improve to the uh, cubic term. So it improve. Uh, so so let's see first the uh, example uh, so that we can appreciate the algorithm more. In the first one, there are three elements, A, B, and C, and the mass of them are uh, one half, one fourth, one fourth respectively. And since it's the first one, the cumulative mass are all zero and the weight are all you need. Suppose the algorithm should C in this round. And in the second round, element A appears again, and the latter two elements are new. So you can see that the cumulative mass of A becomes one half and the weight of A increase. So suppose that algorithm choose D and in the third round, A appears again and F and G are new elements. So the cumulative mass of A increased to one and the weight further increased and the algorithm choose A in the third round. So, so let's see the question, why do we assign a larger weight on elements with 
higher cumulative mass that's still unselected. The answer is we want py decrease faster than e to the minus y. So now we see the following example that why a trivial algorithm can only achieve e to the minus y. So suppose all the, all the weights are unique. So we don't increase the weight. Then uh, we consider the following example that we had A with a new element in each round. And the mass of A is E to in each round. Well, the new element is always has always a one minus E to with uh, mass, sorry. So, and consider uh, after T rounds, uh, the, the mass of A accumulate to uh, Y A equals to E to times T. And the, so you can see that we can only bound py to be e to the minus y in this example for the element a. So if we uh, increase the weight of a in the uh, in the following month round, then we can have a better bound for the uh, for py. And the second question is, why do we choose the weight to be the inverse of the upper bound on the unselected probability? That is why we said wy to be the inverse of py. This is, be, this is because we want the, to guarantee that the expected something weight of any element is at most its mass in the run. So we consider uh, elements a and f in the previous example. And since we want the probability of elements f is selected in round three to be at least the mass of F. Then the expected something weight of A should not be too large. That is the weight of A in this round times the probability that A has not been selected in previous round. So this is the expected weight that A contributes to this round. So by bounding this, we can guarantee that element F can be selected with, uh, with one fourth probability in this round, at, le at least, yeah. So you may ask then, is this intuition sufficient for our proof? Actually, not really. Recall that the lemma of negative correlation no longer holds for multi-way semi-OCS. Therefore, we need further exploit the Joint distribution of the events that the elements uh, not are not selected in previous round uh, when analyzing the bound. And all in all, this provides the intuition of our algorithm. And uh, the weight is the inverse of the uh, probability is turns out to be the key invariant of our analysis. And next, we see an example how we use multi-way semi-OCS as a subroutine for the matching problem. We consider the unweighted online buffer matching uh, and what the state of variable is the total mass allocated to uh, offline vertex U so far. And on the arrival of online vertex V, for each neighbor, uh, we let the mass uh, to be the max uh, zero and theta minus the cumulative mass of u. And the theta is uh, decided to be, uh, to meet the following equality such that uh, the summation of the mass uh, are among the neighbors is equals to one. And after deciding the mass, we make it as an input to our multi-way semi-OCS and we match V to the neighbor that the multi-way semi-OCS selects with this vector as a mass vector in this round. So the, this problem is a 0 0.593 competitive. So we mentioned that there are some concurrent work. First, the multi-way online correlated selection, which appears in the uh, in Fox in, in this year, and uh, it's 
multi-way, it introduced multi-way OCS and it achieved a 0 0.5368 competitive algorithm for actuated online buffering matching by six-way OCS. And another paper is making three out of two, three-way online correlated selection. And they introduced three-way OCS using two-way OCS as its building block. And they achieve 0.513 competitive for actuated online buffering matching using the improved two-way OCS in our paper as its building block. So thank you for your listening.